Render elements. We hear about them often, but sometimes we don't know what to do with them. I opened the kitchen model. I've created this model during the SketchUp V-Ray visualization course. I invite you to check out my V-Ray course. Let's move on to the asset editor and see what's inside the scene. As we can see, the main light source is dome light. Additionally, we have IES lights and rectangle lights, for example, rectangle light above the tabletop. Let's move on to creating render elements. It's a fourth tab. This is the render elements. If there is no render elements yet, all we have to do is click on this tab and we can create a new render element. Another way is to go to create asset, render elements, and also here we can create render elements. Let's move on to the most important ones. The most important is light mix. I click on it. Using light mix, we can set individual lights, their intensity and color in V-Ray post-production. I will add new render elements. If I want to create many render elements at once, then I just need to hold down the left control. I hold down the left control and choose render ID. Thanks to this, each element will be in different color. Then cryptomat. Thanks to this, I will be able to change the brightness or color of individual elements. Let's move on to the next elements. If I want to increase the visibility of the edges, I can choose extra texture. Now you have to go to the properties and on the right side, select texture and dirt is at the bottom. Now all edges, especially in places where we do not have a lot of light, will be more visible and will obtain more depth in the visualization. Let's create next render elements. I hold the left control and select more elements. I choose lighting, global illumination, reflection, specular, and refraction. I think these are all render elements that we need. Let's render the scene to see how we can use them after we create the render. Before we do that, let's move on to the render settings and pay attention to the fact that interactive and progressive render is turned off. This is because the interactive or progressive render, they cannot be turned on because then the cryptomat render element will not work and I will not be able to edit individual elements. Therefore, I turn off interactive and progressive render and I render. The visualization has been created and we can see that it's a bit too dark. So we need to use render elements and the layers in post-production. I will go to the render elements. They are in the upper left corner. If I expand this tab, we can see that there are many render elements that we can use. I go to RGB color which is my visualization. And then I move on to the right side of the window. I'll brighten the scene a bit. So I create a new layer called exposure and increase its value. It looks okay. I will decrease the highlight burn so that there are no burnouts. I can slightly increase the contrast. It's time to edit individual elements. If I would like to change the view outside the window, make it brighter or darker and check what furniture will look like in a different color, I don't have to create a visualization again. I can do it now in post-production. I create a new layer and select exposure. We have two exposure layers. The first exposure is for the entire scene and the second exposure is for the view outside the window. I go to the exposure and know that under properties, I can expand this tab and select cryptomat mask. I can choose this option because I created a cryptomat render element. That's why I turned on and I choose element that I would like to edit. It's a glass in the window. I can pick a window group in the scene. When we create a scene, we usually group each element. And now if I choose pick plus icon and choose the kitchen islands, the island group showed up below.
If I'm not sure if I choose the right element, I can always check it by clicking on Show Preview. And now we can see that the kitchen island has been selected. If I would like to deselect it, all I have to do is click minus pick and select this kitchen island. I will turn off the preview and click on the window. There is a glass in the window, so I would like to select this element. I click on plus pick and choose a window. I can see that the group has been selected. If I go to show preview, we can see that this glass panel has been selected. Now I will change the brightness of the glass. I go to the Properties tab. Know that we have two tabs, a tab for selecting elements to edit and a tab for changing properties of selected elements. And I can increase the exposure. I'll reduce the highlight burn so that there are no such strong burnouts. So we can try different options to obtain the best result. It's ready. Now I would like to change the color of the kitchen cabinet, so I'll do it by using a different layer. I create a layer, it will be hue saturation. Of course, we'll do it for a selected element. So I go to the properties, choose Cryptomat mask, then click on plus pick and select elements. Each front is a separate group, so I have to select these elements. I can always check which elements are already selected in the scene. I will add some groups. I also select these elements. It's fine. Sometimes some other elements may be selected, but that will not affect the visualization effect. I think that everything has been selected, so I'm going to turn off the preview and go to the properties tab. Now I can change the color of the furniture. We had blue color. Let's check the purple or green color. We can decrease the saturation and check the gray color. I think it looks good. We can check more color options. I think that there is no need to change the brightness. It's better to focus on the hue and saturation. It looks cool. So we don't need to create a new visualization to check new colors of the furniture. We can do it in post-production. This is a great tool when we design interior and the client says that he would like to check a different color of wood or a different color of the fronts. We don't have to create a new visualization and waste our time. We can do it in just a few clicks and we have a new effect. I think that this option is very, very helpful, but it's not everything. Thanks to render elements, we can still improve the visualization. Let's move on to light mix. Light mix is one of the most popular render elements and thanks to it, we can increase the intensity or change the color of a light. Let's focus on the light above the tabletop. It's here, rectangle light four. I can increase its intensity, for example, two. The light is stronger. I can change it to three and we can see that we can change the intensity of each light in the scene. We can also change the color of the light to a cooler blue. And we can see that the color is not so yellow anymore. In addition to the fact that we can change the intensity of the color of each light, we can also obtain the effect of glare. This is what the lens effect is for. I will go to the lens effect and enable this option. It's already turned on here. And we can see a very interesting glare effect. I think it's too strong effect. First of all, it's good to set the size and its intensity. We can also change the opacity of the lens effect. We can set the lens effect in the scene. This is a very cool feature because then the lights are more visible and more interesting. Let's move on to the next settings. I will use another render element that I created. It will be lighting, specular or extra texture. To turn on render elements, we need to change some settings. Because let's notice that if I create new layer now, I cannot turn on render elements. That's why we need to move on to source light mix, which is this option. If we didn't have light mix turned on, there would be only source tab, and then we would have to go to the source tab and then change it to composite. 
After the change, we can see that we have a light mix panel that we can expand and collapse. Thanks to this, we can edit the lights in a slightly different way. Each light is separate, and here we can change its intensity and color. It works the same, but the look is a bit different. We can create new render elements, and we can do it by right-clicking on the source composite, new layer, and render elements. Or I can always click on the new layer here and select the render elements that appear there. A layer named RGB color has appeared. I change it to a different one. It can be specular. After selecting specular, I can see how the scene changes. When I turn on the specular, places where the light reflects near the refrigerator, near the kitchen cabinet have a stronger effect. I turn off specular again and we can see that it's all gone. I'll turn it on again and the effect is visible. If the effect of specular is too intensive, we can always reduce its intensity in this place. For example, I change it from 1 to 0 0.7 and the intensity of the specular is decreased. Let's create another render element. I'd right click the new render elements layer and this time I select reflection. Notice that when the reflections are turned on, the light reflects more strongly. When it's turned off, the light reflects less intensively. So we can choose the light reflection. I will reduce the intensity of these reflections to 0.4 so that the effect is not too intense. It's important not to use too high values for reflection. Another important thing is to show more depth in the visualization using ambient occlusion. For this, I also created a render element called Extra Texture. So I right click the new render elements layer and choose Extra Texture. As we can see, the edges are visible. We cannot leave this map as it is. We need to change the blending mode. Most often I leave it as Add, but this time I have to change it to Multiply. This makes these edges stronger in the visualization. It's even too strong in some places. Therefore, I'll reduce the intensity of the render element. We can see how it looked before and after. I'm changing the intensity to 0 0.3. It's still visible and gives us a really nice effect. In this way, we change the visualization. We change the color of the furniture, the view outside the window, increased the reflections and added a lot of interesting effects that improve the visualization. I think it's very important to know the rendering elements and be able to use them correctly. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel and leave a like. Check out my website edac.org with even more SketchUp courses. The links are below the video. See you soon. Bye.